Now we can take you back to our conversation with Dr Shankar Siva, a radiation oncologist at the M Peter McCallum Centre for Cancer, uh, talking about an incredible breakthrough that's been made, a world first cancer imaging technique, which is going to be discussed at a conference today. Dr Shankar Siva, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Sorry Good about morning. That no, no, you don't need to apologise. That's all our doing. But very glad that you can hear me. This is amazing. First of all, because I'm an idiot, can you explain to me what 4D imaging is? Four-dimensional imaging is basically the addition of time, so we can use typical things like CAT scans that give us a 3D image of the cancer in the lungs in radiation therapy, but uh, the 4D imaging also accounts for the patient's breathing, so motion and time. And how does that help? What extra information does that give you? So at the moment we use radiotherapy in over half the patients that get treated with lung cancer and typically we use the CAT scans that give us fantastic imaging uh, and information about targeting the cancer itself. However, it doesn't give us much information about how the patient's lung is actually working in different areas. So this new type of imaging looks at the airflow and the blood flow within the lung and this allows us to potentially uh, aim for the cancer uh, more accurately while avoiding the areas of lung that are contributing the most amount of function. Okay, so, so you can actually come up with a, a radiotherapy that is, that is very specific, very targeted. Yeah, and it's more personalised to the individual patient rather than assuming that everybody's lungs work the same. And, and is 4D imaging very difficult to achieve and is it very expensive? Uh, it's not particularly expensive, but it does require some uh, um, a, a fairly good technical skills and, uh, and we're very fortunate at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre to have a very strong collaboration between our diagnostic imaging physician partners and also radiation oncology. And I suspect this type of technology will be available to, uh, to a large proportion of Australia in the future. Uh, and does it, is, are you the only centre doing this? Are other places or cancer centres around the world doing this? Uh, this particular type of scan, which is called a 4D uh, perfusion and ventilation PET scan, this is the first time that this type of uh, scan has been used in the treatment in radiotherapy. Uh, and this particular trial was testing the feasibility of using this technique to improve, improve our radiotherapy plans. Uh, so yeah, this is, the, this is the world first. That's a, a fantastic achievement. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Have you done any studies or, or, or analysed any outcomes to see whether this diagnostic tool has then led to a treatment tool which then has led to a better outcome in such patients? So at the moment this was really testing the feasibility of the approach. We've applied for more funding to expand this clinical trial uh, again further for another 40 patients to test. Uh, and in the future, I'm hopeful that this will be, become a, a standard practice in, within the clinic. Uh, but at the moment, um, we, we're simply using the very high techno technology that we have available to us in radiation therapy, uh, and that's still state-of-the-art in Australia. And are there a number of these breakthroughs going to be announced at this uh, conference that's being, that's being held? Yes, this, uh, the World Congress for Lung Cancer is one of the biggest lung cancer conventions. Uh, it has uh, close to 8,000 delegates from around the world and it's held every second year. And there will be many breakthroughs that are announced at this particular meeting. What's really heartening about the situation, and we often have these kind of conversations on News Breakfast, is that there seem to be more and more breakthroughs being made. And I know there's long been a discussion about you know, when we might finally get to the time of, of cancer being a, a treatable uh, and curable illness being something that you might even you know live with long term as a as a chronic disease rather than being uh, being a death sentence do you believe we're much closer to that I think every little step helps and I think that um, particularly with the advances in radiation therapy for targeting cancer I think that one day we will be seeing cancer as more of a chronic disease something similar to diabetes and uh, one can only hope that they will be close yeah we have our fingers crossed for it Dr Shankar Siva really good to talk to you thank you very thank much thank you Good news indeed and great breakthroughs, in fact continuing good breakthroughs at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne. Congratulations. Now the Sydney Opera House has ended a